Gundam.tk presents High Grade M1 Astray. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert184, 2Rs2Bs, Gundam Reviews.net, and I'm continuing my look at the High Grade M1 Astray. You've already seen the unbox and the individual parts, which have a fair amount of detail, but now let's put it together and check out how the MS looks. And when he, although of course you could use she as the pronoun here, is all put together, and this is looking very framish, and that's certainly a good thing there. From the front, you're going to see the colors shining through in all the right places, including down on the shins and the forearms. But it's that colorful chest that's certainly going to make it pop. And how about those thrusters? It's a little bit too early for X astray in terms of continuity. But overall, it's just great to see that they're going to have that little bit of flexibility down there to move the lower ones. But the gray seals are certainly not distracting if you're looking at it from any sort of distance. And the fact that they went to the extra trouble of putting the gray, gray, gray there, especially with the gray plastic, is certainly a plus, and you're not really going to notice the hollows there of the thrusters. But overall, from the front, I think it looks great. And even from the back, I'd say it's even better, because like with any good astray, you're going to have all the frame color there sticking out between the elbows and the shoulder thrusters, and the head with that little bit of black on there. And overall, this color scheme of red, white, black, and gray is it really, there's no way that it can't win. To poseability now, where if you take the lower legs, you can see that they're going to get a full kick there, despite the fact that the side skirts are not going to move, and off to the side, you're not going to get much more than that, just about 45 degrees. The knees are going to give you a nice chunk of a bend there, so you're going to get 135. The ankles here are going to rotate front and back fairly well, off to the side, not so much. For the upper body, I wondered if those thrusters were going to get in the way, but so far they seem to be okay. You can only twist the uh, body there around that much, and it's even though you've got a polycap in there, don't expect too much mobility there. You're going to have the red parts on the shoulders seem to be staying in pretty well, and you'll notice that they're going to come forward a little bit if you want to bring the arm that way. And that every once in a while the arm is going to have that part just a little bit too stuck out. You can't really push it in any further, so from some angles, if you're looking at it straight on, it can look a little bit awkward. However, the arms are going to rotate around, and you're going to get a 135 over there. Not going to be able to reach across and touch his shoulders. But in terms of the thrusters back here, remember these ones are not going to move at all. These ones are going to pivot up and down about this much, and off to the side about this much. So you can have a fair range, and you really can set up that X pretty well. And the head is going to be on a polycap, so it can move a little bit forward and back. And of course, look down menacingly. For weaponization, you just have to pop off this manipulator cover there, and then put this part on that side, and then sort of pu push it in from the front. And this is going to fit fairly well, and just be a little bit loose, and that shield is going to attach on no problems whatsoever, thanks to the well-designed connector on the back of the forearm. And armed up, you're still going to have the same great color scheme there, with the black beam rifle that looked a little bit plain all of a sudden, and it's not such a big problem here once it's got so much color from the actual body. And the shield, you're going to notice that they are red seals because the red is just going to be a little bit more glossy than the plastic itself. But nonetheless, having those three cool looking colors there on the shield, this guy's looking pretty good and that's even without all of his armament on. For comparison time, here's the good guy grunt that started things off and you can just see the old school 1970s design there. Whereas with this one, even though they're both high grade, just the level of complexity here, when you're looking at the number of color apps all over the place, of course, this is partly due to the simplified MS design that they had back in the day. But when you've got all the details here, it's just this the construction of the chest here, just by itself is just fantastic with the red details all over the place, the red, the gray, and everything about this, plus the extra built-in features like the beam savers being there on the back, not just it's got two instead of just one there, the thrusters moving around and the very cool looking shield, these two are a pretty cool combo and definitely show the passage of time. And for something a little bit newer, yet still with shades of the old there, you've got the high-grade O Gundam here, which is of course based on the RX-78 II great granddaddy himself, and you can just see that this one had fantastic posability, and it's still going to keep the classic color scheme, whereas this M1 Astray, you're just going to see the details all over the place, and it's going to have very much a seat aesthetic to it, and that's a really good thing, I'd say. But going back to UC, if you stack it up next to the new Gundam, even though the thrusters did make it look big, when you compare that to the height of the fin funnels on the new, the new body and accessories is just going to tower over it. To posing now, where down the barrel is going to have no problems whatsoever, those thrusters are not going to be able to sweep very majestically off to one side or the other, but you still can move one around just sort of to make it a little bit offset. 
The shield is going to look good and it's not going to have any problems moving around in the arm. And again, that color scheme is just going to pop at every opportunity. Coming across the other way with a little bit of a dash step there, you can see that the thrusters this way are going to be swept in the same direction and you can get them looking pretty good. The knees and the feet, everything there is going to get things where they want to be. That shield is going to look great once you place it in the foreground. And the black beam rifle, even though it doesn't quite stand out, again, it's still going to be just a pretty classic and solid all-around outing here. And if you want to go aerial with the help of an action base too, or just one of the pack-ins that you're going to get with all sorts of different kits out there, the legs can be a little bit dynamic, the feet can actually do a good job of pointing backwards there, so if you want to pretend that he's up in space flying around, well, it's easy to do. The beam sabers there detach from the shoulders, they really don't stand out visually when they are attached on. And when you put them in hand, the shield is still going to sort of dominate uh, what you see there, I think. But nonetheless, it's a pretty cool combination, but remember, there's a better set if you want to use it, canon or not. And this harkens back to the days of the Master Grade Red Frame, where people were talking about which way you should have a sword on your hip. Thankfully, a real samurai answered the question, or at least a version of the question. You can do whatever you want with these up or down, and they're going to work fine. I just wanted to try this one first, because it seems like whether they'd fall out or not, no issues whatsoever. And even though they seem like they would be a little bit bulky and in the way, they're going to go back and be parallel with the thrusters in most cases, so they're not going to stand out in a bad way here. So here they are in hand, and they are going to be a little bit heavy because the way you attach the manipulators on, it's just got that peg into a polycap there, and so this one has fallen down ever so slightly. You're probably not going to have that problem very often, though. But they are certainly oversized, a lot bigger than the regular beam sabers, and if you just bring it up here, you can just see how much you're going to have here in terms of ridiculous sword length. That's almost going on impulse style. So that'll wrap up my look at the mobile suit here for the M1 Astray, and it's got lots of cool things built into it. The features on the weapons, all sorts of things are working well, and especially that color scheme. But anyway, stick around for the last part of this review where I'll have a verdict where I've compiled a list of good and bad things that, of course, you can agree and disagree with, and add your own comments down below. Always appreciated. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Now this is a sword that needs a ship to take it out.